my name is ashwin kanere i'm from the stanford navigation and autonomous vehicles laboratory and today i'm going to talk to you about our work on factor graph based spoofing mitigation using the chimera signal enhancement as you all must know civilian gps signals are used in many critical infrastructure areas such as communication the financial sector emergency services and the power grid yet remain vulnerable to attack because their signals are unencrypted and the structure is publicly known this has been leveraged by many entities so far where real world approximately 10000 spoofing events were documented in russian territories from the period of 2016 to 2019 and more recently circle spoofing attacks were documented in various parts of the world from norway to malaysia to the coast of nigeria where instead of the boats being reported as where their position was actually they were reported along the western seaboard of the americas traveling in a constant speed in a circle given this well known vulnerability of the civilian gps signals the afrl has proposed the chimera signal enhancement which would provide security to civilian signals in the chimera signal enhancement using the data and pilot channels markers are embedded into the signal now a spoofer cannot perfectly predict these authentication markers before broadcast however once the receiver has access to a decryption key you can look at the markers you have received and decrypt them to authenticate the signal there are two ways of getting these decryption keys you can either get them from the slow channel where you're getting the key from the data signal itself it's completely independent you don't need any external sources however in this case authentication happens roughly every 3 minutes and alternate when you have access to out of band channels is called the fast channel in which case you get the key externally and are able to perform authentication every 1.5 or 6 seconds the advantages obviously are that you can authenticate gps measurements with a chimera compatible receiver one of the other advantages is that such a receiver can use gps signals without chimera markers but the presence of chimera markers also does not impact existing gps receivers however a disadvantage is the high latency between authentications even in the case of a 6 second authentication a fast moving receiver can accrue a significant amount of drift in this case one way to mitigate this problem is to use inertial measurement units or wheel encoders which are self contained odometry sensors measuring internal states since they are measuring internal states they are resistant to external attacks but are prone to drift in estimates over time when combined with gps you can either correct the drift or you can use the fact that you have an independent measurement source to check if the gps signal is also spoofed in the presence of a chimera authentication you can use these independent measurements to either coast between chimera authentications or compare the unauthenticated signals with your independent self contained odometry measurements to decide whether or not to trust the gps signals given that we're combining multiple sensors this is either a filtering or a batch optimization problem what we want to do here is to combine self contained odometry with chimera enhanced gps measurements to mitigate the effect of possible spoofing attacks that may happen between authentication over the summer we explored both filtering and batch optimization approaches to this problem combining self contained odometry with chimera the filtering approach was presented in section f6 some time ago or if you're watching virtually you can view it uh, right now as well whereas this presentation is about the batch optimization approach our contributions in this work were designing a factor graph optimization based approach to mitigate spoofing attacks between chimera authentication periods we do so by formulating a cost function that includes our intuition about spoofing attacks and is robust to spoofing attacks we also incorporate chimera signal authentication itself as a loop closure to include authentication for past estimates once you get this authentication you can back propagate it throughout your batch optimization window and improve your estimates we experimentally validated both our spoofing mitigation performance and the improvement obtained by including the chimera authentication in this presentation i'm going to talk to you about a background in factor graph optimization first talking about how factor graphs work and then the switchable constraint which is the robust factor graph optimization that our implementation builds on after that we will discuss the graph states measurements and general formulation of our proposed approach 
including the Chimera authenticated loop closure and a robust loss formulation. Finally, I will talk to you about the experimental validation we performed for our work and summarize today's talk. Factor graphs perform batch optimization for state estimation. You have a group of nodes, which are usually the states that you want to estimate, that are connected to factors, which are functions of measurements. What you're doing here is you're optimizing over a loss function, which is a function of these states and measurements, to find out which is the optimal uh, set of states that you can go to given this set of measurements. This optimization would look something like this, for example. Given what was previously seen was optimal, let's consider that. This is the initial uh, states that we start with. They're very far away from the optimal, as you can see. As you optimize, you get closer and closer to the optimal before finally reaching very close or close to the optimal itself. This is done by optimizing the loss function, as I said. It's also a batch optimization process, in which case the window that you're doing this over is fixed. In this case, the window is Four. Now, when you get new measurements, in this case at time instance five, you have to create a new state estimate that corresponds with these new measurements. In that case, you add these new measurements to your window and remove the first states and measurements that you had seen. This is how you maintain a constant window size as you move over. The window continues to move forward as new measurements are received and old states and measurements are removed from the window and you can no longer optimize over these. The traditional cost function for factor graph optimization is the least squares loss. You take this loss, which is the function of the states and the measurements, and break it down like so. You essentially add this over all edges, all edges which are connecting to factors contain some information about a measurement. And given you know the model and the state, you have some idea of what the measurement expected there was. So for each edge, you're looking at the difference of the received measurement and the expected measurement, taking the weighted norm and adding them over all the edges. The weighting in this norm is done by the measurement covariance. And this is a Mahalanobis loss where you weigh by the inverse of the measurement covariance. This makes sure that your losses all stay relatively well scaled and depend only on the window size, but not on the actual magnitude of the loss itself. Now, when we convert this method to a robust factor graph with a switchable constraint, the cost function modifies us so. First of all, we add a group of states, which are called the switchable constraints. We have a function of these switchable constraints, in this case, phi of SI, which is multiplied with the difference between the received and the expected measurements. Phi of SI, depending on the value of SI, will determine what weight we want to give to each of these error terms. I would like to point out that it's still the two norm and it is still being deviated by the covariance. There is a trivial solution to this in which phi of SI is said to be zero uniformly everywhere, given that the loss function is always either greater than or equal to zero. In this case, you've done it, you've achieved the absolute best optimal you ever could, but there's a problem. You simply switched off all measurements. You got SI as zero and you cannot optimize over the values of X here. To prevent that from happening, we also add a regularization term, which is a function of SI or phi of SI, which is usually selected to increase as the value of phi SI goes down. In this case, we would want whatever value for phi SI, whatever value of SI gives phi SI zero, we would want that value to increase the value of the regularization to prevent this from happening. Now, what does our graph look like when we've added the switching constraint? We still have the loss function, which I described in the previous slide. It depends now on the state nodes, which were the original nodes that we wanted to get when we were optimizing in our batch optimization process. We also have switching nodes, which are determining whether or not to switch on or off these factors. Now, when we perform optimization over the switchable constraint loss, in this case, we are going to get values for both the switching nodes as well as the state nodes. While the state nodes might be of primary concern to us, the switching nodes are a consequence of which measurements to keep and which measurements to not keep. Now, with the switchable constraint, what would our factor graph look like? Remember, in our factor graph, we are trying to mitigate the impact of spoofing between chimera authentications. 
In this case, our graph has the states, which are 2D, NED, north, east, down positions in the local navigation frame of reference and the switching values ST for each GPS measurement received at that time T. Our measurements are IMU odometry, wheel encoder odometry, both of which connect consecutive nodes to each other, GPS positions, which connect the switching values to the actual states and chimera authentication when available. More to come on the chimera authentication in some upcoming slides. So like I said before, these are our states. We have the 2D NED positions. We have the switching values corresponding to the GPS measurements corresponding to those 2D NED positions. In this case, our window size as before is capital K. So we have K such switching and uh, position states. Here we've shown for brevity only the last two and the first two in our window of optimization. For the measurements, our GPS measurements are noisy estimates of the 2D position. We are assuming a loose couple here. The IMU odometry measures a noisy estimate of the linear acceleration as well as the angular rate. However, we assume that the IMU sensor has an inbuilt attitude heading and reference system called the HRS. So we have access to accurate heading measurements, which is why heading is not part of our state. We are also performing model replacement here. In, because of which, instead of the traditional factor graph where you have a motion model and an IMU, we replace the motion model with the IMU measurements and choose to use wheel encoder as an additional source of odometry state. The wheel encoder odometry measurements are noisy estimates of the linear velocity. Now, what happens in the presence of chimera authentication? First of all, chimera authentication is happening at a period of capital T sub auth, which for the slow channel could be six seconds, for the fast channel could be three minutes. N here refers to the nth chimera authentication epoch. So when you receive this or not receive this authentication, you have a window of states. So you have some previous win states that are already part of your window. If you are able to perform authentication, this means that all states between the n minus one authentication and nth authentication are all authentic. Whatever states in this window are contained in our factor graph, in this case, simplicity, we've assumed that the size of the window is actually smaller than the authentication time period. We just set all of these to one. This is an equality constraint. We will no longer be optimizing over the values of S. We want to give the GPS measurements all the weight they should get. Similarly, in case when you don't have authentication, this means that the signals were spoofed because remember the spoofer cannot replicate the chimera signal, in which case we want to set all of these switching constraint values to zero. We do not want to use GPS at all because it may be spoofed. Now, how does this translate into the actual loss function? Well, to understand that, let us first look at the naive factor graph loss function. Remember, we are looking at the difference between the received measurement and the expected measurement weighed by the inverse of the measurement covariance. In this case, we assume that the noises from all three uh, sensors are independent and are also temporally independent. This allows us to break down the complicated large loss function into essentially a sum across time and sensors. So the naive loss formulation is this sum across time for the IMU, for the wheel encoder, and for the GPS. In this case, we are trying to find states which best satisfy all these three loss functions. So we're trying to find values that agree with all three of these the best. Now, when we move to the spoofing robust loss formulation, which builds on the switchable constraint formulation. We weigh the GPS measurements as we saw in the factor graph previously with just a linear value SI. SI is between zero and one. In this case, SI has the physical significance of telling you whether or not the measurements are spoofed. The IMU and VLAN encoder state uh, losses are unchanged as before. However, the GPS loss has this SI factor. If SI was to go identically to zero, you would not be including any GPS losses. Given that the loss factors are all positive, we want to avoid this from happening. One way to avoid this is to regularize. 
as we saw before, the regularization function there was R of phi SI. In this case, that function is simply one minus SI, the two norm of weight by one over sigma SC. Now, when SIs are all identically zero, this value will boil down to the size of the window in our case, K over sigma SC. A way of tuning these values is to make sure that in the authentic case, we almost never turn off the GPS signals, which is why we select the value of sigma SC so that the value, the loss value, when we turn off all of these K over sigma SC is almost always more than that of the GPS loss itself. We are also talking about spoofing here. So we would like to add some spoofing related intuition. With just the first regularization term, there's nothing stopping us from switching from zeros to ones alternatively very quickly. With the sec addition of the second term, we are constraining the values of SI to be close to the previous values of SI. In this case, Switching from zero to one and back to zero actually incurs a greater loss than switching from zero to one once. This is to hone down on the intuition that once spoofing starts, it is unlikely to end until it is detected or the spoofer is successful. And if spoofing hasn't started yet, it's only going to start once. It will be very rare that spoofing starts, stops, and then starts again. That's what this switching constraint regularization value captures. Now in our experimental validation, we had a simulated exper experiment because as you know, it is not possible to just broadcast spoof signals that would be against the law. We looked at the fast channel authentication with a six second authentication period over here. In our case, the trajectory length was 12 seconds. The window size was 10. So we were looking at a one second window of measurements. The values for sigma sub SC and sigma sub SPF were 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. Because we had measurements with different update rates, the GPS had a 10 Hertz update rate, the IMU had a 100 Hertz update rate, the VLAN coder had a 50 Hertz update rate. We performed pre-integration for the measurements with the fast update rates to add up these small measurements into a single measurement for the slowest rate. So 10 IMU measurements became one combined IMU measurement at a rate of 10 Hertz. Five VLAN encoder measurements became one VLAN encoder measurement combined at a rate of 10 Hertz. With this entire setup, the true trajectory that we tested on looks something like this. We also looked at a spoof trajectory in this case where spoofing started at six seconds around this point and the spoof GPS measurements were basically taken as a ramp function from when spoofing had started. Comparing the accuracy of the robust FGO to the naive FGO, we see that once when we are using both of them in the nominal case, the errors for the robust FGO are slightly higher because there are cases where the S values are switching off a bit some of the GPS measurements. So the updates are not as good as they should be. However, looking at these values over here, we see that the difference is around the order of 0.2 to 0.3 meters, so not very significant. In case when spoofing is present, spoofing starts around six seconds, like I mentioned previously. In the case of the robust FGO, we see that the error increases compared to the nominal, but it still stays contained because once the robust factor graph detects spoofing, it switches off the GPS measurements, relies almost entirely on the odometry measurements and is able to bound the magnitude of these errors. However, the error for the naive FGO just shoots up because it keeps tracking the erroneous measurements. Now, in case of the presence of authentication or the lack of authentication, uh, presence of authentication and nominal trajectories and the lack of authentication and spoof trajectories, we see that S is able to successfully deway measurements during spoofing, whereas S is consistently high when spoofing is not present. In this case, we are even seeing some loop closure. The loop closure also has an effect where because we are weighing the measurements a lot higher than we were before, we see a mean and max error, which are slightly less than that without chimera on the order of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 meters less. To summarize, we designed a robust factor graph approach that leverages the properties of spoofing attacks, includes chimera authentication as a loop closure and validated this approach on experiments.
I would like to acknowledge Sri Ramya Bhamidi Party, Derek Knowles, Shubh Gupta, and Joseph Lucero for their insightful discussions and feedback on this presentation. Thank you very much.